All right. Hey, listen, let's get it on, on to our guests yeah. uh, today. Sure. We've got uh, we've got Kenny Chu and Mohan Sesadri of the Asian Pacific Islander Political Alliance. Fellas, thank you for coming on. We really appreciate you uh, you joining us today. Um, Mohan, I wanted to ask you first, can you give us some background on, on your organization over there? Sure. So we're Pennsylvania's statewide Asian American civil rights organization. So we work year round across the state to advocate for our communities uh, to make sure that our people are getting what they need from especially city and state government across the Commonwealth. Uh, and we do that in 15 different languages because of how many people in, in all of our Asian American communities uh, don't speak English or just don't speak enough English to you know, uh, have an effective conversation in, in anything other than their mother tongue. Great. Great. Kenny, thanks for joining us, man. What's, um, what's your involvement with the group? What's up, Kyle? What's up, Kevin? Um, I'm Kenny. Um, it's, it's, I'm part of like this larger Chinatown coalition, part of a group called the Students for the Preservation of Chinatown. And yeah, as much as I, I love the Sixers and would love to be speaking about Dame right now, unfortunately, <laughs> you know, we're, we're here in the middle of a fight for Chinatown. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, well, I think I, I can only say for myself, I would much rather be talking about this than Damian Lillard right now. I think I, I, I can only I can only take so so many uh, sloppy NBA um, you know trade trade rumors per per the summer. But but I assume you are still going to support the Sixers, just just not in a uh, a, a center city arena that butts up against Chinatown, yeah. Yeah, of course. It's just a little harder to watch it this year, you know. <laughs> so what's your so where are you at? I'll start with you, Kenny, and then Mohan, if you want to take it. What just just generally right now, as of July thirteenth, twenty twenty three, where where are you at on the uh the arena proposal? Right. Yeah. Um I think we're about almost a year since the Sixers have announced this project and they've been no further, which is of course really good for our side. Um they said they wanted to put in legislation in um, last spring, I think, and now they're moving it back to the fall. So that's been great news for us. Um, we're, we're sort of like the coalition as a whole is sort of approaching this from like many, many different angles, whether it's through city council or, or organizing the restaurant owners or mobilizing the residents. Yeah, we're really trying to um, approach this issue from all sides. What do you think, Moha? Yeah, I mean, like Kenny said, it's been a year, right? And we still haven't seen complete details, right? We haven't seen the financing. We haven't seen the complete plans. And, you know, where I'm at is our, our community members, especially our small business owners. And I want to stress that, you know, that's not just Chinese Chinatown-based small business owners. We're hearing this from folks, in, you know, across the area. They're scared. You know, they don't know how this is going to impact them. They especially don't know how six years of nonstop construction before we even get to the arena being built and all of the impact that that would have on all of our communities and all of our neighborhoods would have. And so, you know, where we're at is uh, we'd like to, you know, we'd like to see some, um, some evidence from these developers that they have the financing. We'd like to see some actual plans written down on paper rather than just, you know, fancy graphics and, you know, fancy artwork and things like that. We'd like to see, you know, the actual plan so that we can engage with that meaningfully rather than right now where we just have, you know, a lot of stuff being told to elected officials. We have two million dollars being spent by these developers to lobby uh, city government and city council. But we still don't have any actual details so that we can understand how this is, you know, how this is going to impact our communities. Go ahead, Kyle. You got it. Is there anything that you guys would see that would make you... I don't want to say pro arena, but maybe be like, okay, I can see a vision. I can see a reason why the arena could go here and it could also positively affect Chinatown. I think it's hard to see that at this point, you know, like maybe if they had come to community members and community leaders and these small businesses before making that announcement and been like, what do you need? What do you need to see? Let's have a dialogue. Does this even make sense? Or are you, or, or, or would this negatively impact your community? If they had, you know, done what they've claimed that they're doing and been a good neighbor this entire time, I think that we could probably have a rational discussion about the impacts of, of this arena and what, you know, what could be done to mitigate that. But instead, you know, there was that parking bill thing where they tried to sneak legislation through an unrelated bill, you know, completely at the 11th hour in, you know, mid-December when everyone was trying to go on Christmas break. Uh, they just, you know, they got caught, you know, allegedly given four hundred thousand dollars to a city, to a mayoral candidate. They just got, uh, I think, slapped with a fine or something by the Philly Board of Ethics for hiding uh, the amount of money they have spent on lobbying our elected officials. 
all while, again, saying that they want to be a good neighbor while sneaking around, spreading misinformation about the project, not giving any of these details. And so it's just frankly hard to trust them and trust the process uh, that they're claiming that they're going through when uh, you know they've been lying about it and just going behind our backs from the very beginning. So I think other development, other developers, yeah, let's have a conversation about that. But these developers and this de development, a year, you know, a year into this, it feels hard to come back from all of the misinformation and deception that we've seen for the past year. Kenny, do you have a sense of uh, like I'm not going to ask you to put a number on it, but I mean, it, it would you say that the community is overwhelmingly uh, against the arena, or do you have some people who are kind of straddling the fence or 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 kind of kind of going another direction? Right. Um, yeah. The, one of the um, leading nonprofits, community organizations, um, PCDC, they they recently run, went around um, and asked all the residents as well as small business owners if they wanted this arena. And um, it came out to be like, I think it was 93 percent of business owners were against this and 94 percent of residents were against this as well. And yeah, um, like Mohan said, we are we are like as we're doing this work, we're we're hearing like common themes of feeling like this arena is a threat because, um, you know, uh, I'm sure you all have heard about um, what's it called, like the, the history of Chinatown and the, the threats and the buildings that have sort of inboxed Chinatown into the small space that it is today. So, yeah, people are worried about displacement. People are worried about traffic. People are worried about the six years of hazardous construction and demolition. Yeah. And just no. to yeah, if, go ahead, Mom. if I could jump in just to say, you know, one of the reasons why community leaders, community elders, especially are against this is that they've seen and heard this before. You know, the convention center, for example, displaced 200 Chinese, mostly non-English speaking elders who were living in, you know, low income housing in what is now the convention center. All sorts of promises were made around, uh, you know, resettling those folks and finding them new homes. And in large part, none of those promises ever came through. You know, you know, promises like this were made to DC Chinatown with the stadium that was built some like 20 years ago. And in just a couple of short years, DC Chinatown went from 3,000 residents to 300 residents. And there's, you know, the joke in DC is that it's Chinatown without the Chinese. And so when we talk about community opposition, it's really grounded in our people having been through this in the past. Our people have have seen and heard all of this before. There's more money behind this, right? In the past, you know, developers and, and the city didn't spend two million, three million dollars trying to push this thing through. But the the promises, they've definitely heard it before. And when we talk about, you know, 93, 95%, et cetera, against it, one of the really important things to know is that, you know, the the those small businesses that aren't saying that they're against it in large part, they're not saying that they're for it. They're saying they need to see the plan in or before they make up their mind. Mm -hmm. And they're mm -hmm. unsure about it because they haven't received enough details. So when the Sixers say straight up, we had David Adelman on the show, what, like a month ago, Kyle, six weeks or something like that. Um, he went on the record saying that they're not going to displace a single Chinatown business or resident, noting that uh, yeah, it's going to butt right up against the community, obviously. But I think the distinction that he was drawing was talking about the use of eminent domain building within the the limits 676 cutting the neighborhood in half i mean when you hear stuff like that um i mean what what is what is your reaction to that i would say one thing is just like that's not a thing that he can promise right that's not a thing that he can actually just like say is not going to happen and we can believe is not going to happen especially because you know we want to stress when we say you know this arena is or isn't in chinatown it's somewhere between six feet and one inch from the first Chinatown business, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't think any of us would want an 18,000, 18,500 person arena right next to our apartment, right? That would, like, we know that that would cause impacts on our homes. We know that that would drive up the, the rent in the area because now other, you know, you know, big chains and things like that want to move in the area and struggling immigrant and refugee, you know, working class small businesses just can't necessarily survive that. And I, I'd say the, 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 you know, the reason we especially know that is because we've seen this happen in other Chinatowns, with DC Chinatown being the really notable uh, you know, example of this.
Would the proposed community benefits, I, I forget if the number was like 50 million or 75 million, um, David did say it on, on, on the program earlier, uh, the community benefits to, to Chinatown, he also mentioned that they would feature their businesses in the arena during games. To, to be honest, it, it's a better deal than you were given with the Phillies. Definitely better deal than the 676. Definitely better deal than I think there was casinos that were proposed there. There was prisons that were proposed there. It's the best deal Chinatown has ever gotten for an arena. Does that ease any of the tensions? Does that help ease the community businesses and stuff that they that they said they will uh, will help Im- impact the businesses from uh, from their standpoint? Um, well, I think well we think it, it seems like a great pitch from the outside, but well Chinatown Chinatown is definitely just more about mon- more. And other things than just money, you know, people um, like me, people like Mohan, um, we want to keep our livelihoods. This is our community, our cultural heritage. This is where people have raised their families and worked their whole lives to establish, you know, their small businesses. And um, not everything we want to solve in Chinatown or um, what we want to see can be overcome with money. So, um, yeah, and we're really not sure if community benefits can even be given if you know, if a community were to be displaced. I know I've heard some rumblings around the Barclays Center and, and their their community um, really asking, like, where this community benefits agreement has gone. Um, yeah. Yeah. Just I think one, you know, like on that note is these it's not like these things have to like the money has to flow. Right. If if there's no if the nonprofits don't exist anymore because they've been displaced, if the community doesn't exist because they've been displaced, the money is not going to keep flowing, right? The, the, the you know, the spigot's going to get turned off. And just to say, you know, we look at the value of Chinatown as our people's home. You know, we look at it as, especially after, you know, a couple of years now of just really increased um, anti-Asian violence. Chinatown is the place where our elders go to walk the streets at night and feel safe and feel like they're not going to attack, get to get attacked. And so we, you know, we stack that like a place where our people can come to be safe, safe, there's no amount of money that can make up for that, you know? And so we're going to, we're going to fight to defend our people's home and we're going to fight to defend the place where our community can go to feel safe and practice their heritage and, and worship and things like that. So, so it, it seems like what you're saying is like, if this arena goes in, it'll completely flatten Chinatown. Like Chinatown will not be existent really is what I'm getting at. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but is that what you're kind of getting at? That's our expectation. And, you know, I want to say it's, you know, maybe it, it's not going to happen within six months, but we know it's going to happen. Right. We've seen this across the country. Uh, we've seen this in D.C. We've seen this in, you know, other places on the West Coast um, that this whole like death by a thousand cuts, especially when it comes to the, the rents rising, people not being able to afford to be in the area, them getting pushed out. And also this makes it harder for our people to get to Chinatown. Right. A, a really important thing to know about uh, Philly's Chinatown is that it's not sustained by tourism. It's sustained by regulars. And so when we look at, for example, when there's a big convention at the convention center, business in Chinatown drops because not everybody and a, a majority of people going to that conference or that convention or that, you know, whatever at the convention center, they're not all going to Chinatown. And in the meantime, traffic is, is worse. Parking is worse. And so the regulars, the predominantly Asian American regulars that sustain mm-hmm. Chinatown and keep it solvent, they can't actually get to Chinatown. I was in Chinatown, you know, this past Sunday, and I spent 30 minutes circling the block looking for parking. And that was just a regular Sunday where people were just getting dim sum or going to church and things like that. I can't imagine how much harder it would, it would be on game night or things like that for our, for our people to actually get to those businesses. And, you know, maybe you try once and you fail and you're willing to try again. But if you keep going, trying to get to Chinatown and every single time it takes a half hour or an hour to find parking or get in and out. And, you know, you have to be worried about, you know, this place being dark, however many nights a year it's going to go dark. And like, you know, who might be hanging around that space in that time, you're just going to stop going. And if you stop going and you're the regular and that's what sustains the business, then that business goes under. Well, I think I think I'm glad you kind of <clears throat> touched touched on on those specific kind of things because I think the one thing that's been kind of lacking, <clears throat> at least like within like the first five or six months of the, the discussion, is that you heard this. <clears throat> excuse me this this big sweeping macro level of hyperbolic kind of language where it's going to destroy Chinatown, or it's going to erase our culture or whatever. And I think okay, that's that's 
that's fine. Like we, I think the people who understand the nuance of it know that it's not like they're bringing a, a wrecking ball to the, to the friendship arch, right? What we're talking about is rents rising, gentrification creeping in, talking about cars circling and, and whatnot. Is it, am I, am I touching on the, the right criticisms that the community has of this, Kenny? Is that the specific stuff that people are, are concerned about? Yeah, I think you're totally right. This placement is not is not just, you know, putting an arena on top of homes and businesses, which, of course, that's not what it's doing. But this placement, you know, it can happen before even this arena is opened, even if it's not, you know, directly replacing certain buildings or homes. Um, it can happen when construction or roads being blocked um, decreases traffic for Chinatown and the customer base for Chinatown. And when these businesses can't or when customers can't get to these small businesses, that's when they start to close. And then say this arena does open, then you have 18,500 people, I think, coming in all at once. And we think that the chaos here um, that it can bring would also um, force families to be really afraid of what can go on. Um, you know, I think um, even, I just wanna like touch, touch on like even before this is built, all this construction, this dust, this demolition, I think families would be um, really hesitant to stay in Chinatown. Um, I certainly wouldn't want to live next to six years of this loud construction and drilling. Um, I'm not sure. Well, we, we know that many business owners are not even sure that they can survive before the arena is even open, given all of us. Yeah. And just to say, like, it's hard, you know, the more specifics and the more details we're given about the project, the more we can respond to, right? Yeah, if, sure. if all we're dealing with is hyperbolic statements like yeah. this arena is not going to displace a single Chinatown business and there's enough parking in Center City to handle this, which like, talk about hyperbolic statement. Like, do we really think that there's enough parking in Center City to handle this? Do we really think that all of these folks who've spent years, if not decades, driving to South Philly are all of a sudden going to take public transportation or an Uber? To the game the more we're given the concrete details the more we can concretely respond to that well, I, I think i think a, yeah you know. i think a good i think a, the the next natural step in all this is the city is doing the study right and, and i did, do you guys have any idea mohan when that we're supposed to be done with with that study was it was like the end of the summer or something maybe? i think it, end of the summer although i will say that we do have a lot of concerns about it um and i'm happy to go into that you know if we got time for that yeah go ahead yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so i'd say one thing is just the the way these studies have been framed first of all they're being paid for by the sixers which we we think that you know this and in we we called for chinatown called for an in completely independent third party study and we just think that if they're being paid for by these developers at the end of the day that taints the process right that tarnishes the process that makes it so much harder for us to for and especially our community members to trust the results of the rfp you know we can dress it up as you know, the money is going to go from the developers to the city and then the city is going to pay it out. But at the end of the day, the people doing the study know who they're working for and they're going to want to get contract like fat contracts from these developers in the future. The second thing is just that the way the the RFP for this study is it was written. The question is not, is this arena a good idea? Will this arena negatively impact Chinatown? The question that's being asked is what needs to happen? to mitigate the harms of an arena. And that's an entirely different question, right? This, it assumes that the arena is going to happen and it's what needs to happen around the arena, for example, for a CBA and not, is this even a good idea? Will this actually benefit not just, you know, Chinatown, but also the entire city? And, you know, we stack all of that up against all of our concerns, including traffic and parking, including six years of construction, where like, I, I go to Jefferson, right? If I'm like in an ambulance on my way to Jefferson, like I have been in the past, just to be real, um, I don't want that ambulance to have to wade through a bunch of construction or a bunch of, you know, fans spilling on the street, making it harder for me to get my get the care that I need, you know, especially in an emergency. And I can't imagine how many other folks are also scared. I can't imagine how the doctors and nurses at Jefferson are feeling about how much harder it's going to be to do their jobs in an environment like this. And so I do want to emphasize you know, we're here because we care about our people and we care about our community, but there are so many other things that gotta that have to be studied in an independent, completely third party, complete, you know, completely fair and unbiased manner. And to us, the place where these studies are at right now, that ain't it.
So, so I'm looking at it right now on the city of Philadelphia website, and it does the headline does say city to independently evaluate impacts of proposed arena on East Market Street. And the studies will assess building design, community impact, urban planning, economic impact, and parking slash traffic impact. You're saying the people who are doing these studies, you think, are, for lack of a better word, in bed with the Sixers or in bed with the union workers or in bed with the labor union guys who want to get the cash off these uh, these stadiums. I would say, I mean, you know, what, what I'll say is that the, you know, a thing that we found out that, you know, it was, it was said very casually to us. It wasn't like formally announced. No one was like, and, and it will be paid for the developers. It was, you know, a casual random aside in a meeting we were having where they were like, oh yeah, the developers are paying for this. You know, no one kind of like read us into all of this. It was a complete, we were blindsided in the same way that a year ago, we were blindsided with this uh, proposal complete, you know, overall. And so we're, we're, we've been doing a lot of work the entire time to, to try to make these studies better, to try to make them independent, to try to make them third party, to try to make them just broader and actually study all of the things that we need to study, including environmental harms, including health harms. You know, again, six years of construction and pollution being pumped into our elders' lungs doesn't sound healthy to me. Um, but at the moment, yeah, it's, it, they're not broad enough. They're not deep enough. They're not expansive enough. The, the traffic and parking thing is a great example where, um, you know, I want to say that there's, there's a lot of conversation about this happening internally between a number of our folks and the folks involved in the study, even today. And so my hope is that this get fi gets fixed. But a couple of weeks ago, um, you know, the, the folks at the city said that they were just going to take the developers traffic and parking study at its word. And that is going to be what they they look at when it comes to traffic and parking. They're not going to do a completely separate third party traffic and parking study because the developers already did that. And that that study by the developers assumes that 70 percent of uh, ticket holders are not going to drive into Center City and need parking, which feels just hard to believe on the face of it, considering how many people drive to South Philly. Right. It feels hard that everybody's just going to overnight switch their behavior it also assumes that every one of those you know 30 percent uh, of cars that are going in are each going to have three sixers fans and three uh, ticket holders in that which yeah. is also yeah. super yeah. unlikely you know well we talked about yeah and we and we talked about that topic with david you know the fact that like i mean look you guys know that we live in a very like old school parochial i mean people have been going down to the sports complex kenny for for how long i mean like that's you just know like that's where the stadiums are i mean that's every every you know the concrete jungle right so i mean yeah i mean i think my skepticism was like well you know you got to convince people first uh to to take public transit you know and then that whole line has to be set up for people to you know for, to facilitate that many people so we'll see but um Kenny, I got kind of like a two part here. Like, do you have a general sense of what people in the community feel about the Greyhound terminal and the current site of and the fashion district as it currently stands? And and because the reason I ask you that as a setup question is, you know, is there concern that if the Sixers arena doesn't get built, that they're just going to demolish that and build some shit that you guys don't want something else that you guys don't want? You know, do you think, think about like the lesser of two evils here in a sense? Um. With regards to the fashion district and the gallery, I feel like we've seen all these like big box, big corporate, um, giant structures in and around Chinatown, and and I I feel like they fail every time. You know, if we see the convention center, it's whenever there's not an event, it's dark and it's vacant, um, and there's crime and trash, which was what will happen with the 76ers Arena because um, it's at their estimates open 40% of the year. Um, so we just think that. Vibrant communities, we we don't need these sort of big boxes that are rarely open. You know, we want small businesses, we want homes in our communities. And um, I think I'm a, I'm personally like a little mixed against the Greyhound station. I know like they moved it over a few blocks, and now people don't even like have a place to sit, and yeah, they're waiting yeah. for their buses. <laughs> When it's but like you know, that. but you know what I'm getting at, man. Like, right, like that's go, that's going away regardless. Like, if 76 place goes in there, okay. But if not, something else is. And mm -hmm. like, so I would, I would also say, like, and I would throw this to Mohan too. Like, I mean, you know, well, if that doesn't get built, I mean, some other developer comes in, Mace Rich sells that half of the fashion district to somebody else, and then they knock that down and they build like high rises there. You know, I mean, is that a concern that you guys have thought about? Yeah, and I'd say that, you know, talking about the lesser of two evils, right? Like, my hope is that future developments and future developers would meet with our community on the front end, 
before announcing these massive projects and talk about how to make this work, right, in a way that these developers did not. And so, you know, would if if we if we win, if we stop this arena, would another development happen? Probably. But I also think that like through all of this, we have shown the city and shown the public how to do development right in regards to Chinatown and what you know what it means to be accountable to our community, to the folks who need to get care at Jefferson, to the small businesses surrounding Chinatown, you know, and around Market East, things like that. You know, we look at not just Chinatown, but for example, the neighborhood. You know, what's working there is restaurants, it's small businesses, it's homes. And we, we see across the city that that same model is where our communities and our neighborhoods are thriving. And so that's what we'd want to see. But we'd especially want to see other developments to not try to sneak around and do, you know, bullshit parking bills and dump two to three million dollars in lobbying. And that seems like a better way to approach this and approach our communities than how these developers have gone about it. And, and don't get me wrong, I, I understand, like, if, if I was, if it, I live in Fishtown, if this was getting built next to Fishtown, and I was, like, against it, and they were, like, trying to sneak parking bills underneath the, underneath the, 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 the dirt, I would be pissed, too. But you walk down there, and it sucks. Like, Market East sucks. Like, let's just be real about it. There are so many shut down places. They call it the fashion district, and, like, the biggest fashion company there is, like, a Marshalls or a Ross. Like, that's just, that's hilarious to think about. If the Sixers arena doesn't go in and David did say that, like, they will have businesses running 24, 7, 365, kind of like, I don't know if you've ever been down to TD Garden in Boston, but there's just a bunch of different businesses and stuff like small businesses will will follow and businesses will follow and, you know, money will be infused into the market east area. So it's it's kind of tough when you just reference the neighborhood and say how good. I don't know why I'm getting feedback, but uh, the neighborhood and then referencing that and then saying that like this kind of couldn't work for Market East and, 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 and maybe Chinatown in a way. I'm just kind of I guess I'm just having a hard time comprehending how this wouldn't be at least a tiny bit beneficial because I'll be honest. With you, I don't go to Chinatown a lot. If I lived in the suburbs, I wouldn't go to Chinatown a lot. But hey, maybe I came down to a Sixers game and I got some awesome dim sum down the street, and I want to go back to that dim sum place when I come back again. There's a convoluted question. I don't know where you want to take it. <laughs> We'd love to hear Kenny's thoughts also as someone who grew up going to Chinatown. You know, I'll say like our community does come in from the suburbs. Um, you know, to to go to Chinatown and get dim sum. That's why you know on Sunday it was uh, so hard to, for me to find parking there already. Because fo- because our communities are com- you know coming from across Philly and across you know Delaware and New Jersey and the Philly suburbs to to come to to be in the place where they feel at home and where they feel safe and that is also what is at risk here right we're talking about like you know what the like is there a little benefit uh, to to Market East you know we say you know on behalf of our community we say like at what cost you know at what cost to our community at what cost to this thing that does that that is, you know, constantly revitalizing our community and is just always always has something going on. You know, you, you can walk down the streets of Chinatown at eleven PM and the streets still have people out and it still feels safe and it still feels like a good place to be, in contrast to, for example, Market East. And so where where I'm at is you know, Market East is the heart of our city, right? Center City is the heart of our city. And, you know, rather than just let billionaire developer after billionaire developer, especially after they spent some, what, $400 million on the fashion district, Mm -hmm. rather than just let a new rich guy come in and say, oh, this is my plan to, for this, this thing. And it'll, it'll definitely work. Don't worry about it. Let's have the city do a study and actually figure out what is the best use for this area in a way that benefits Philly, that benefits all of our taxpayers, that benefits the local communities that live around it. But, but any study that's going to be done is going to be done by the developers, going to be done by the union laborers. Like they're going to have a part in every single study, whether it's in Chinatown, Market East, South Philly, West Philly. Like, so like, are you ever going to be happy with any study that's done unless you guys, you know, appoint someone from Chinatown to be on it with them? And, and, yeah, maybe, and that, that, that might never happen because I, I don't I don't know, man. I'm not pro arena. I'm not anti arena. I'm kind of like if the arena goes in, I don't care. If it doesn't go in, I don't care. I'll continue to go down to South Philly. I'll continue to live my life. Mm-hmm. But, like, you look at this deal 
that the Sixers are proposing, and whether it's good or whether it's bad or whether it happens or whether it doesn't, it's the best deal Chinatown would probably get in terms of community benefits and everything because if the arena doesn't go in, you think some New York developer gives a shit about what Chinatown thinks? Like, let's just be honest. Let's just call a a spade a spade there. Like, something's going in this place. The elephant in the room is Masher might default on a debt payment by January, and then this could go all up in air, and then Market East is again just a dead a dead zone. Yeah, with um, all due respect, I, I feel like um, Chinatown, I feel like, is the only vibrant place in Market East or next to Market East. I, I feel 100%. like, you know, this Chinatown is the only place or is the main focus. I think this is what we need to protect. And when when... It's like regarding what should we build instead, I feel like we can look back at what was built in the footprint of the Phillies proposal. Um, since since that proposal was crushed, China, Chinatown has built um, a blue ribbon school called Fax. Um, it's built um, a Chinese folk cultural center. It's built an arts initiative center. It's built a church um, and a community center as well. So. I feel like these these are like the visions that Chinatown is looking like. I, we're, I think we're thinking outside the box of like these big corporate chains or these big companies or teams trying to build on um, what they want to build. Instead, we are looking like we are looking at what the community wants and what um, would benefit the community. And yeah, you're right. The fashion district isn't the answer, but um, neither is the arena for our community. Yeah. Let me ask you, let me jump in here real quick, Mohan. Let me let me go let, kind of take Kyle's point and kind of spin it off. I'll give you a hypothetical, right? Nobody has proposed this. This is just me concocting this in my head. Let's say, for instance, the Sixers, the Sixers are offering the $50 million community benefits agreement. They're on the record saying that. If enough money from that was allocated to a project like the 676 stitch and capping the highway and allowing Chinatown to expand north. Or even, I guess, is the roundhouse not there anymore? So that land is now. But the, you understand what I'm saying. The thought of like, hey, maybe there's a compromise where the the you know we can build some development north of 676 and kind of bring that back together. Could you see the community maybe accepting some kind of compromise like that? I think that you know, just to, to take this, like again, like I think we're 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 ready to look at hard details and then have a have a real earnest in-depth discussion about their their positives and negatives. I think again it's it's really hard to do that when you know there aren't enough details on the financing when when there aren't enough details on what the actual plan is, but really especially and again I just want to bring us back to the way these developers have gone about this because that is just core and central to this. They you know what Kyle what you were talking about where maybe it's developers and unions and us at a table together hashing this out about what would work and what would be acceptable and all that that has not happened you know like we're not at the table and and the developers made it clear from the beginning that for all of their rhetoric and all of their pr and all the money they spent on all those fancy billboards they weren't interested whatsoever in having us at the table and that's been that's that's what makes it hard to just envision any sort of compromise because we're talking about people who've just made it clear from the beginning that they don't actually care about us and that whether or not, uh, you know, what they're promising $50 million, we can't necessarily trust people who've spent millions and millions of dollars to try to ram this thing through to actually pony up, even if $50 million was enough to, to, to sustain Chinatown against the impacts of six years of construction and then an arena and all that jazz. Well, let me ask you this question, then I'll ask it in a different way. Mm-hmm. What would it take to have to get you guys and the Sixers on the same page and at least having amicable uh, discussions about this? I would think it would take going back to the drawing board, right? It's being like, all right, it's been a year. We don't have details. There's been all of this opposition. Let's sit down with these these people and, and, and let's sit down with all of these neighborhoods and just say, hey, should there be an arena here or should we look somewhere else? And then if we're like, no, it should be somewhere, somewhere else, they should be like, all right, these are the options. We'll, we're going to sit down with all of these neighborhoods and all of these communities and see who wants an arena. And then they should build that there. And if no one, if no one else other than, you know, South Philly is like, yeah, we want an arena, they should keep that thing in South Philly. And if it ain't broke, you know, don't try to fix it. I'm trying to think of the Sixers side of that too. You know, I, I asked, I would ask the question to, Probably should have asked the question to them, um, but you know what would it? You know, again, what would it take to have both sides sitting down? Um, 
together. What happened at the the meeting at the community meeting that that David Gold w- was at, um, and why 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 did that kind of devolve into kind of nothingness, for lack of a better word? Yeah, I mean, uh, I'd say that you know it was the first meeting, and Kenny, please jump in because you were also there. Um, it was the first meeting where we had full language access, right? Where we actually translated everything and and made sure to include you know, the members of our community who don't speak any English, but still deserve answers on these. It was the first opportunity where members of our community had a chance to be face to face with, you know, the developer staff in a way that wasn't, didn't involve people being encouraged to not ask tough questions, you know, to save face and, you know, respect our guests in, in the community and things like that. And so what we saw was the national, the, the natural reaction of six months of, misinformation and sneaking around, especially right after that parking bill thing happened. And our folks asked those hard questions and kind of in the face of those hard questions, they left early. David Gould left early. And yeah. just to say, you know, Mark Squilla stayed um, and answered our tough questions. Representatives from other local elected officials stayed and, you know, were involved in answering our tough questions. And, you know, we had good dialogue with them after. But David Gould and the developers left early. Kenny, go yeah. ahead. Are you going to say something? I definitely want to second like the disrespect we felt um it was announced in july and finally in december you finally have a public meeting um with language access with the community you're building in and definitely just like adelman or none of the staff being none of the three owners being there i i I definitely thought it was a little weird because i don't know i'm at at penn right now and adelman had time to come to a, a real estate class to speak he's had time to speak to washington square west which which are things he should do but you know, Chinatown is the nearest community or that this arena is going to be in. And yeah, we you saw those boos and you saw tough questions because um, Chinatown has seen threats like this. And we 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 just wanted answers. Like you said, none of the traffic studies that they've been quoting have been released. They don't have concrete financial plans that have been released. So, yeah, um, of course, you, you saw boos, you saw anger. Um, and I don't know, I just found it really weird that um, the developer left really early and mm-hmm. cited like hostility concerns. Um, I thought I thought it was finally like really beautiful that the community was in one place and finally had a chance to ask hard questions. Let me ask Those you. Those are some solid boos. Those are some solid boos. Uh, they were. They would have worked anyway. They would have worked very yeah. well in the in the. Ben in the Simmons would have stayed. I'll tell you that he would have parked yeah. it on out of there. I let me um, let me let me ask you something, Mohan. This is the last one for me, unless Kyle's got something else. Uh, Councilman Squilla has said that in the um, process for how this all works, he's he's not going to do. Oh God, I'm trying to think out what he what he said specifically. I think he wanted a 60 day um, dis- discussion period or debate period with the community. Maybe you can help me out on that. But um, he he was he seemed very aware of the concerns of the community and whatnot. Um, my question for you is what what is the extent or or what is how much power actually does Chinatown does the community have in 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 fighting this um not just through like you know protests and like Kenny you guys had the the march through the streets a couple of weeks ago but what are some actual tangible things that can can affect the the process itself based on the the timeline and the setup that the councilman gave us mm-hmm. for sure and so just to say, yeah, what we asked for and what the councilman agreed to was this 30 day review period. 30 day. Um, you know, uh, we've recently gone back and said, hey, actually, given specifically the language access concerns and just the the lack of, you know, um, it's hard to get information out in so many different languages to our community quickly. We probably actually need more than 30 days just to make sure, especially our elders and our refugee communities have enough time to look at it. But yeah, what, so what we asked for was basically in between any you know zoning legislation for example being written and that being introduced send it to chinatown uh send it to us and let us read it digest it and explain it to our communities so that they have all of the facts in the way that they haven't until now and just to say we specifically asked him for that because of the parking bill stuff because of the way that it was slipped in at the last minute and we were we had you know when we caught it no one you know like no one in office, no one in government told us about it. We caught it. Um, and then we had just 24 hours to mobilize to make sure that our voices were heard in that process. And it's pretty clear to us that when we're talking about working class communities and small business owners, 
who you know don't necessarily speak a lot of English, we need more time than 24 hours to educate our communities mm -hmm. and make sure that they have all of the resources that they need to make the, their voices heard and participate in our democracy. And so, in terms of the you know the power we have, um, you know, I'd say you know protests are great, rallies are great. But especially it's making sure that our city council members, as the people who work for us, as the people whose salaries are paid for with our taxes, just as much as they're paid for by everyone else in Philly, we want to make sure that they're hearing our voices. And especially, I would say, hearing the voices of not just Chinatown, because I think we've, we've seen pretty clearly that so much of the city is against this, actually, that South Philly is against it because of the way that this would impact jobs in South Philly. Um, that, you know, during the election, I was no out knocking doors uh, in Northeast Philly, and I had folks from all different communities uh, talking to me about the arena and saying, we're against it because we've grown up our entire lives driving to South Philly and going to the arena, and we don't have want to have to go in and out of Center City ever, but especially for a game like this. And we really want to make sure that the entire city has an opportunity to make their, their voices heard in a thing that is actually going to affect the entire city you know, not just in terms of this being the heart of our city, but also in terms of what tax breaks are the developers asking for? Or, you know, they've committed to not take a, a dollar of city funding, but they've not made that commitment for state and federal funding. And those are our tax dollars as well. And so we want to make sure that there's a, a you know, a, a thorough process that actually gives everybody the opportunity to make their voices heard, be part of our democracy, make sure that our city council is responsive to us, and then let's have a decision on this. Yeah, I definitely want to add, add a little touch on what power does the community have. Um, Squilla is obviously our council member. He's not the council member for the Sixers. Not He's not for Edelman. Um, and yeah, I totally think we have so much power in our hands. Um, Mohan and I, we're, we're here just trying to continue, continue the legacy of Chinatown's, you know, history of, of fighting predatory development and land grabs like this. Um, you know, I wouldn't be able to enjoy Chinatown and what it's had to offer me in my childhood if the casinos went through, if the federal prison went through, if um, the Philly stadium went through. So yeah, we totally, I feel like we have a lot of power and Mark Squilla, he, at one meeting, he said that if our community didn't want it, then um, it wouldn't be built. So we are going to try to hold him to that. And we are, you know, we're, we're expressing our voices and we feel like as a community, um, we deserve to have self-determination and self-agency in, in what gets built whether it's next to or around this. Kev, I got one more. Is that good? Yeah. You guys, you guys got one second. Um, do you think the win by Sherelle Parker in, uh, in the primary, who let's just be honest, will probably be the presumed mayor uh, in November. Um, do you think that's a win for the community of Chinatown? Or do you think that's a, a loss because obviously she was backed pretty hard by the labor unions? I think we're not making any assumptions, you know, she, she said throughout the, um, you know, throughout the election that she thinks that community has a central role in deciding development that affects them. And we got to, you know, we got to meet with her and we want to do that soon to, to see where she's at. But we're not, you know, until then, we're not making any assumptions about whether or not she's for or against this um, because of her history of, of standing with communities when it comes to development. Um, just as much as she has that history, obviously, of, you know, working with, for example, building trains unions and construction unions and things like that. Mm -hmm. Great. So, yeah. So we're not, you know, I don't want to put words in her mouth and we got to sit down and, br and bring her to Chinatown and, and talk about what the, the impact that this is going to have on our community before we know what we're dealing with. Cool. You all good, Kev? I'm good. I'm good. Right. Thank, thanks so much for coming on, man. It's not an easy conversation. I, it, it's hilarious that we're talking about this and it's eight years out and we don't even know if it's going to be built or, you know, we're still waiting for some <laughs> impact study. We're still waiting for all this and everything, but we really appreciate you guys coming on and, and, and kind of being the face and, and taking these questions and kind of educating our audience. We really appreciate it. Yeah, of course. And thank you so much for having us. We really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. All, all right. right. Thanks guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Thank you. You. Cool. All right. Pagans. Sorry, my mic unplugged. No, it's not good. Um, yeah, fine. I mean, that was, I really enjoyed that conversation. I think it kind of, uh, I don't know, it gave me some insight into, you know, I'd be, I'd, be, I'd be pissed off at a lot of this stuff. Well, yeah, I mean, look, I think it's a lot of, um, I, I'm a pragmatist, right? So I kind of look <laughs> at it from a neutral perspective and I'm saying like, okay, how do, how do you move this forward, right? Um, you know, I, I think like when the study comes out um, and you can have, you know, 
qualms or issues with who's paying for it or who's funding it or whatever, but that that's going to provide more detail. Um, you know, the, the, the thing that Mohan kept saying is that they want, they want more information, right? They want yeah. more detail, right? They want more. And David said that, I think when he was on the show with us, I mean, like they, they're, they're in a, a period where they're, um, pushing out more, uh, info about what this is actually going to look like or what it's going to take or whatever. So I would love to see both sides find a way to like compromise on it and, and yeah. make sense. And, you know, I think you had a good point there, man, about like, Hey, you know, this might be a deal that you should take, you know, cause I think the risk is that they, they fight it and fight it. And then like, it gets pushed through anyway. And, um, you know, are you going to be like holding the bag, you know, not the bag that the kids like, but the old bag, you know? So, so it's a lot to think about. It's interesting. It's much better than talking about whether James Harden is coming back or not. You know? Yeah. My God. In the middle of July, uh, <laughs> sources say he is according to uh, the athletics. So I have fun running you back there. Um, <laughs> No, yeah, I, I mean, it, 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 at the it's end of the like, day, the, the Sixers and the Chinatown community just have to sit down. Like the, the organizers and and David and Josh and yeah. and and Blitzer, just just got to sit down in some private ceremony. Don't live stream it. Don't bring the community. Bring your five best. We'll bring their five best. Like a pickup yeah. game. All right. Yeah. And just, we, just have have like an inner. Like an intervention where we will, I'll call Edelman and I'll be like, "Hey, um, come down. We're gonna get dinner." But I'll, I'll, I'll get Chinatown. I'll tell Chinatown the same thing, and then they show up and they see each other, and I sneak out. I sneak out the back door or something. I say, "All right, you guys, fig- figure it out." <laughs> Nobody's leaving until you figure this the fuck out. Nobody's right? leaving until you figure this out. Yeah. 